Hey guys, it's your girl Cheyenne from Plant My Happy Space. Welcome back to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, you know that I haven't put out video for the last two uploads and I'm so sorry. I went on vacation and had videos pre-recorded that went up while I was on vacation. Came back assuming I would want to immediately jump right back into it and I definitely did not do that. <laughs> I definitely was still in vacation mode and was not feeling of doing anything. <laughs> but I'm back now, and if you're not already a subscriber, welcome. I would really appreciate it if you did subscribe. I wanna see more of you guys. Hopefully you wanna see some more of me. Today, we are gonna be talking about my top five favorite common house plants. This is the tag that's been going around. I was tagged by Lucia over at Lulu's Leaves, if you don't watch her channel, you definitely should. We've done a collab video before that was super fun. If you wanna watch that, you can. That'll be linked down below. But you should definitely go watch her. She's awesome. If you guys watch my unboxing videos, you will see that a lot of the plants that I unbox are more on the rare and uncommon side. And I want you to know that is not all that I have. I have common plants. A lot of the common plants I have were the plants that I started out with. They are the ones that I somehow managed to keep alive back when I knew nothing about plants, nothing. Didn't understand lighting, didn't understand watering, didn't understand fertilizing, nothing. Just bought a plant from Lowe's or Home Depot, put it in whatever pot I wanted with the soil that came with it from Home Depot, didn't buy new soil and stuck it somewhere that I thought was cute and didn't even care if it had light and watered it whenever I felt like it. Sometimes it was overwatered, sometimes it was underwatered. Didn't know anything. And if leaves started to die on it, I just cut the leaves off and pretended it didn't happen. <laughs> and somehow they have survived. And obviously they're thriving more now that I actually know what I'm doing. Um, but if you guys aren't on the common houseplant game, you need to be. Like, not only are they the staples, you know, they are going to be what teaches you how to care for plants. A lot of the more common ones are the ones that are a lot more obvious with what they need. You know, they're not, and they're not as fussy. So I highly recommend get on that game first. And if you're already in the rare house plant game, it's never too late for you to get on the common house plant game. Just saying. All right, so the first one I'm gonna talk about is gonna be the only one I don't have sitting next to me, so I'll start off with it. And that is my Marble Queen Pothos. I don't have it next to me because it's actually hanging in a macrame hanger in my breakfast nook area, but I love that thing. When I got that, it was not trailing in any way. Anyway, had no vines. And I used to keep it in a very low light spot and now I keep it in a more bright and direct light spot and I love it. It has grown so well in my care. It doesn't drop leaves. It doesn't do anything out of the ordinary. I love it. I water it when the leaves that are closest to the soil, so at the bottom of the stem, I water it when those leaves start to droop. I've noticed if I leave them drooping for too long, then I might get some leaf loss, but as soon as the top ones start to droop a little bit, I water it and they're, they've been golden. Don't, don't show any signs of damage ever. And I am always the biggest fan of pothos. There are some pothos that I like and some that I don't, but in my opinion, the Marble Queen pothos is by far the most interesting looking pothos out there. I have other forms, but this one is my favorite. It's so pretty. So number two on my list, is going to be my Syngonium. I wanna say this is like the Berry Illusion Syngonium, I wanna say. I don't know. Basically, it's green, and what makes it Berry Illusion, or whatever it's called, is it's got a slight purple tint going down the veins, but that's really it. It's, other than that, it's just a green Syngonium. And I love this one. I love it. So I will say 
I'm not a huge fan of Syngonium. Not that I don't like them. I do like them. There are just other kinds of plants that are kind of my thing and I'm addicted to them. Like Monstera and Philodendron and Calathea and Antherium and Alocasia. Like there's a lot of other genus of plants that I will always snap up immediately and I find all of them beautiful. Syngonium is not like that for me. I'm a little bit more picky about which ones I do and don't like. And the reason I picked this one is because A, from what I can tell, it's very, very easy to get your hands on compared to other Syngoniums. And it is by far the easiest one I have. This one requires very little from me. It gets a little bit of medium light. It gets light from an eastern window, so it gets morning light. But it is about 10 to 15 feet back from that light. So I would say it gets medium, maybe a little bit on the low side, depending on how bright it is that day. And it has not stopped giving me the purple veins. And it is still getting very bushy and bigger as time goes on. And I do let it dry out on occasion. There are other syngoniums that you have to keep the soil moist all the time. I do not experience that with these ones. This one, I do let it dry out. And how I know it needs to be watered is the stems will start to droop like this. When they all start to droop and they all fall over, not dramatically, but you can see it'll go from straight up to a little bit doot, you know, doot. When you see that, it's time to water and have no issues. If you leave them drooping like that for a little too long, the bottom ones will start to yellow and fall off. But as long as you're paying attention and you see that droop, you water it, you're good. I'm really a big fan on the plants that have those telltale signs of when to water them. The more plants you have that you don't have to walk around with a moisture meter or jabbing your finger in every day, and you just can walk by on occasion and physically look at it and say, hey, that plant needs watering. That's great. Especially if you have a growing collection like I do, the more plants that just throughout your daily life, you can just physically see that they need to be watered without having to do any extra steps of stabbing or poking or anything like that. Great, eh? Perfect. Trust me, you need a good amount of plants that have those kind of signs to keep you sane and not frantically checking all your plants constantly. <laughs> Number three is my Monstera Anisonii. And I have two of these. I have one that is more of a trailing plant, and then this one I have on a moss pole so that it can climb. But I also love this one. The only downside to this one in my mind is it doesn't have those telltale signs of when you need to water the plant. You just have to moisture meter check it or have, be on some kind of a schedule. But on the bright side, these can do good in lower light if you need them to. They can do good drying out if they need them to and they're fine. I keep this one in my bathroom. The window is very large and it gets southern light. So it's bright light, but the window is kind of frosted. So I'm just gonna say that it's like medium to bright light because it's a bright window, but the frosted does take some of the intensity. So it's like medium to bright. I've also kept it in lower light conditions and it's done fine, but it gets big very quickly. If I hadn't been chopping this up, it would be three times the size of what it is. It gets big very quickly and the leaves get big very quickly. And I'll even show you. On this plant alone, you see what, how big these leaves, the sleeve is right now? Like, it's like maybe two thirds the size of my head. Like, it's not, it's not giant, but it's definitely a substantial size leaf. But look at the size of the little baby leaves that are on there than not even the size of my thumb. The leaves started off so small and got so big so quickly. I love it. I love it so, so, so much. If you don't already have one of these, I would highly recommend it. Now I know this is one of the ones that can be harder to find in some places. I think they're pretty common now. I know when I first got it like a year and a half, two years ago, if any of you guys were in the plant game back then, this was like an extremely hard plant to find. It wasn't that it was rare, it was just in really high demand. 
because everybody either thought it was an oblique or thought it looked similar enough to an oblique that they were like, yeah, I want that plant. So it was getting purchased up left and right. So back then it was a very, very expensive plant for me to buy and I had to get it off Etsy. I couldn't get it anywhere else. Now I see these all the time in Lowe's at Walmart. You can get these anywhere in pretty good substantial size plants if you want them to. And it's awesome. You know, I would highly recommend getting this one. This is one of my favorite ones because not only is it on the easier side to take care of, but it is interesting. You know, anything venestrations, variegation, anything that makes the leaf look different in my mind makes it more interesting. So definitely get on this game. So number, what number are we on? One, two, three. Okay, so <laughs> number four on this list, this Sansevieria. Now, if I can find the name, I will put it down below because I'm really bad with Sansevieria names. And I'm also pretty sure this is technically a Dracaena now, but on this channel, we ignore that. It's not a Dracaena on this channel, okay? This is how we roll here. It makes no sense to me that we call Sansevieria's Dracaenas now, so I'm just not gonna do it. But I love this one. It is just a very generic Sansevieria green one with some dark green striping. I bought this, I think I bought it at the grocery store and I bought this so long ago. I bought this like four years ago and when I did, it had maybe one little sprout like this much and it has just like quadrupled. There's now seven individual sprouts in here, if that's what we want to call it. Um, offshoots. There we go. Offshoots. Got it. And it, it does great for me. I keep this in my guest room because my guest room only has one very small window and it's a northern window. So basically not a lot of light. Mind you, I do live in the United States. So in other parts of the world, Northern light might be really bright for you, but for us, it's not, it's not anything. It's nothing, nothing to write home about. So it, it stays in the very low light and I only water it like once every two or three months. It'll continue to thrive for me. It continues to push new growth. It continues to survive. It just loves its life. And I love it. It's a very big staple plant for me. I've got a lot of Sansevieria in this house, so I highly recommend it. I love Sansevieria. I think it's a great staple plant. I think it's a great placement plant. Like if you just need to fill a space, I think it's fantastic for that. And it just does its thing. It's, I don't know what else to say about it. I have given it very, very, very bright light before. Uh, at our old place, it was sitting in... I think it was in a Western window and it was on the windowsill. So it was getting bright, direct light and it still loved life. I watered it more often, obviously, but it was, it was loving life regardless. Like it's, it's a ride or die kind of plant. Like it will survive for you. Grade A plant. <laughs> All right. So the last and final plant I have on this list is going to be number five, <laughs> which is a, ooh, in a heavy pot, a parlor palm. And I don't, I don't see a lot of people having this plant. I don't know why, but this is another one that I've had for a very long time. This was one of the first plants I got. And if you are a perpetual overwaterer, this is the plant for you. I will say it's very easy going. So if you underwater or overwater, either way, it will probably survive. I've done both and it's survive just fine. But when I first got this plant, I put it in a very big ceramic pot with no drainage. And the pot was already way too big for it. Like, I think I bought it as like a four inch and I put it in like a six or an eight inch pot. Like it was obnoxiously too big. And like I said, it had no drainage and it was in a very low light spot. And I watered it constantly constantly and I remember when I got my first moisture meter and this plant was still in that pot and I was testing out the moisture meter to see if in my mind I thought it was accurate 
And it seemed pretty accurate when I was testing, you know, oh, I haven't watered this plant in a while. Let me see if it claims the plant is dry. Oh my God, it's right. This one, at the time, I hadn't watered it in like six weeks. And I put that moisture meter in there and it was like the wettest it could be. I was like, how are you still alive? How are you doing this? And I don't know. I will say this does not appreciate bright light at all. I have this in a very low light spot. I'll say like medium, medium light. It definitely doesn't want bright light and it definitely does not want direct light. Like, mm, don't do it. But low light and it likes to stay on the wetter side. It can handle green dried out. But if you are actually trying to water it correctly and keep up on it, it does like to be on the wetter side. So I don't let it dry out fully if I can remember it. But if you do forget, like, it's whatever. It's easy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, you know? It'll do, it'll do whatever it needs to do. And one other thing I do like about it is it doesn't get very tall because it's a parlor palm. It's a really compact plant. This is like the same height it's been since I got it. And it just continues to get a little bit more full. But that's, it'll stay this height. And I, I think that's great. I think that's awesome. That's what I need in a plant. Please. I have so many. I don't need ones that continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I have to make the decision, do I cut it or do I get rid of some of the other plants so that this one has more room to grow? I don't have to worry about this one. This one will just stay its size in its little spot forever. You know, just, just it'll be, it'll be a thing. All right, guys, that's it for me. I want to thank Lucia over at Lulu's Leaves for tagging me in this video. I really appreciate it. It was really fun getting back to basics talking about uncommon plants and like getting back down to like the core of the plant addiction. You know, what started it all were these plants basically. <laughs> and it was super, super fun. Let me know in the comment section if any of you guys agree or disagree with these plants. If you guys have any more common plants that are your favorite, please let me know. And for now, I will see you guys in my next video. Peace out. I'm about to explode